Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Tuesday, June 15, 2010. This morning I'm going to go back to the Seaside tutorial for a bit to cover using Ajax with jQuery. In the tutorial I used Scriptaculous, which is what I used previously in the 2.8 version of the tutorial. I got a request to cover jQuery for the same problem, so let's go through that. First thing you want to do is go back to the code and go to blog root UI. We have to make a small change here in the way we set up our rendering. So if you go to render content on, you notice that in the old version of the code I had strings, menu ID and list ID here. When we use the jQuery setup we need to make those symbols, otherwise the uh, Smalltalk server doesn't actually find those divs, so we need to do that. So I changed those over from strings to symbols. Then I needed to go to blog list UI, or blog menu UI rather, where I have my rendering. I leave this code alone, render Ajax link on, and I go here to render Ajax link on, and change this code as follow follows here. I set up my anchor on click, and then what I had before was kind of the HTML updater. Now I have jQuery, I load the div I have, and then tell it, here's the HTML to use. So in this block, I first update my list component. This is the same code I had before in the updater. So before I can actually tell it to re-render, I have to make sure that the back end is ready to re-render by changing the update filter. And then we do the rendering of the list component, and that will update that one little section instead of the entire page. One more thing we have to do though. What we need to do is go to the Seaside server and open the browser on the server and bring this into the view. I have to go to the configuration because before, if you recall, we had to configure our two entry points to look at the appropriate libraries. And I've already done this here. If you notice, I've got jQuery JQ development library here. To get that, I had to go to the configuration. I removed the Scriptaculous and prototype libraries and then scrolling through here, I found JQ development library over here and I pushed it over there. You could also use deployment if you're going to deployment. That's a compressed library so it'll be a little more efficient. But either way, you update this to have those. Make sure that after you change that you hit OK here. And then finally back in the main configuration after you've done that, all the way at the bottom there's a save button. And let me push this up a bit so you can see that. You have to hit that to change that. Once you've done that, you're all set to roll. So let's go back here and do a Seaside open browser on server again so I can get back to my entry points. Go to blog view. And here we have the same thing, all posts and today's posts. There are no today's posts because I haven't updated this since May. But if I go to all posts, you notice that it does that. So I have today's, all. You can see the change happening with that configuration with jQuery. So it's the same exact system I had before. The only difference is that I've got jQuery instead of Scriptaculous. And that's really all there is to it. There are a number of tutorials online. If you Google for Seaside jQuery, you'll find a presentation that Lucas Wrangley put together that you can look at and learn a lot more about Seaside and jQuery than I'm covering here. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.